Okay, in this video, I'm going to try to give you a conceptual view of how to divide by fractions using a number line. Now, in order to get to dividing by fractions, let's first take a little bit of time to review what division looks like in terms of whole numbers. And so we'll start with uh, a relatively simple problem. What is 8 divided by 2? So there's um, two ways that you can think about this. One way you can think about 8 divided by 2 is by saying how many pieces of length 2 are there in 8. So we can see that there's one piece, two pieces, three pieces, four pieces of length 2 that divide evenly into 8. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now another way that we can think of 8 divided by 2 is how long are the pieces if we divide 8 into two equal parts. So when we divide 8 into two equal parts, you can see that you have two pieces each of four units long. So regardless of the way that you look at it, uh, if you divide 8 by 2, you get 4. So that's dividing a whole number by a whole number where we're dividing a larger number by a smaller number. Let's flip that around and divide a smaller number by a larger whole number. So let's do 2 divided by 8. So when we asked the first question, we said 8 divided by 2, how many pieces of size 2 fit evenly into 8? Here, if we ask the same thing, we're asking how many pieces of size 8 fit into 2. So it might be easier to ask the other question, how big are the pieces if we break 2 up into 8 equal pieces? So now the question becomes, how big is each one of these pieces? Well, if this is the hole right here, there are 4 pieces in the hole, and so that makes this piece 1 quarter. So we think about the first question, how many pieces of size 8 fits into 2? We know it's going to be less than one piece. We, we have the answer of one quarter, but let's visually see what that means. And so let's get a piece of size 8. So there's our piece of size 8, and we want to know how many of those pieces fit into our original piece of size 2. So we can't fit a whole piece in, so instead we're asking, what proportion of our piece of size length 8 fits into our piece of side length 2? And so we're basically asking how much of this whole piece does this make up? And so you can see that there are four equal size pieces of which ours is one-fourth of the original length. So let's now see what it means to divide by a fraction. Let's start with something straightforward and we'll take three divided by one-half. So just as before, one way that you can think about this is how many pieces of length one-half can fit into three. So let's find some pieces of one half length. So we can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of length one half that fit into three. So what about the other interpretation of division? In the first question we asked eight divided by two and we said how many pieces of size two fit into eight or how big are the pieces if you break into two equally sized pieces. Can we interpret dividing by a half in the same way? That is, in our first question we asked eight divided by two, and to find the answer we said break eight into two equally sized pieces, and the size of the piece is the answer. Here we're asking three divided by one half. Break three into one half of a part and the size of the piece is the answer. So what could that mean? To answer that, let's think about some slightly different questions. Let's start with 3 divided by 6, 
and think of our interpretation of breaking three up into six equal parts and ask the question, how big are the parts? So in this case, here is one of the parts and that is equal to one half. Now let's ask the question, what's three divided by three? So that means take three and divide it into three equal parts. And so it's easy to see that one of those parts is equal to one. And now let's do three divided by one. So take our three at the very top and divide it into one equal part. And how big is that part? That part is three. So the question we were asking is what's three divided by one half? And so let's think of how to interpret that. When we were doing three divided by six, takes three and breaks it up into six pieces of which each is one half. Three divided by three takes three and divides it into three pieces of which each is one. Three divided by one divides three up into one piece of which each is three. And now if we look at three divided by one half, so we're dividing three up into half of a piece right here, from here to here. And so the whole piece represents the answer. So this represents the answer. And so the question now becomes, what does that represent in comparison to the original three? So here's three. So this now represents six. So three divided by one half is six. So that's a pretty tough concept. First, we started by asking what's three divided by one half. And we're basically asking break three up into one half of a piece. And if this is one half of a piece here, then the whole piece is here. And that whole piece represents six compared to the original. That's pretty tough to conceptualize. And so it may be easier when you're talking about dividing fractions to think about this representation more often. That is three divided by one half to get the answer, break three into pieces that are one half in size and see how many pieces you have. So let's try another example like that. Two divided by two thirds. So we wanna know how many pieces of size two thirds fits into two. So there's one piece, there's two pieces, there's three pieces. Let's try one where the answer is not a whole number. One divided by two fifths. So in order to do that, let's break our one into fifths. And we want our piece to be two fifths. So there's one two fifth, two two fifths. And now the question remains, here, how much is left? So this piece is definitely less than two fifths. And so the question becomes, what proportion of one two fifth does this represent? That is, if it divided evenly, we would be either in two of these two fifths or three of these two fifths. And we don't have that. We have some proportion of a two fifths but you can actually see that this represents one half of our two fifth. And so our answer becomes two and one half. So just to reiterate, this is one two fifth, this is two two fifths, and this is half of two fifths. And so we have two and a half as the answer. That is one can be broken up into two and one half, two fifths. Let's try another one. Let's try three divided by five six. Try it on your own first before we move on. First, we'll break up our holes into sixths. Next, we'll create a piece that is five sixths in length and see how many of those fit into three. So that's one five six, two five six, three five six, and you can see that the piece left over is going to be less than 5 6. And so the question becomes, what proportion will the piece left over be of 5 6? So the piece left over is going to be 3 of the 5 6. So this is actually 3 fifths of 1 5 6. So our answer is 
three and three fifths. So now we've handled dividing a whole number by a fraction. Let's take a look at dividing a fraction by a fraction. So let's do five six divided by two six. For the first couple, we're going to concentrate on division of fractions when the denominators are equal. So think about how you would divide these given what we've seen already. Let's start by making a number line. And for reference, let's define what one equals. Now let's look at where 5 6 is. That's what we want to divide. So there's 5 6, and we want to divide that by 2 6. So that's 1 2 6, and that's 2 2 6. And you can see that the piece that's left over is going to be less than 2 6. So the question remains, how much less? And you can see that this piece is 1 half of 2 6. So our answer is 2 and 1 half. So there are 2 and 1 half 2 sixths in 5 sixths. So we've done a larger fraction divided by a smaller fraction. Let's try a smaller fraction divided by a larger fraction. And to do that, we'll start by defining our whole. And in this case, since we have eighths in both of our fractions, let's break our whole up into eighths. And then let's show where 3 eighths is, since that's what we want to divide. And so we want to divide 3 eighths by 5 eighths, so let's see where 5 eighths is. So you can see that, as expected, 5 eighths is bigger than 3 eighths. And so we can't figure out how many five full 5 eighths fit into 3 eighths. Instead, we're asking the question, what proportion of 5 eighths does 3 eighths make up? And once you actually see the number lines here, you can actually see that this is 3 out of the 5 eighths. And that actually, in fact, tells us what the answer to the question is. So 3 eighths divided by 5 eighths is equal to 3 fifths. What about when the denominators are not like? Let's try one of those. Let's try one third divided by one quarter. So try it on your own first. As before, we started with a reference for one whole. And we'll break the one whole into thirds because that's what we're dividing. So we're dividing one third, and we want to divide that into fourths. So we can see that definitely one one fourth goes into one third but less than one-fourth will be remaining. So that's the amount remaining, and we need to figure out what proportion this makes up of one-fourth. So you can see that this represents one-third of one-fourth. And so our answer is we have one-fourth plus one-third of one-fourth, or one and one-third. Note that we determined the answer here without getting a common denominator. Another way we could have done it is by breaking our whole up into twelfths, realizing that was the common denominator between three and four, and thus showing quarters here and thirds here, and you can actually see that this extra piece is one twelfth, and one twelfth happens to be one third of one quarter. Let's try one more. And this time, we'll make it a smaller fraction divided by a larger fraction. So let's do 1 8 divided by 1 quarter. Give it a try for yourself to see how you would represent this with a number line. So let's start by dividing our whole into eighths. So there's 1 8, and we want to divide that by 1 fourth. So as expected, 1 1 fourth does not fit into 1 1 8. And so we ask the question we asked when we were dividing 2 by 8, what proportion of 8 does 2 make up? And so we can ask the same question here. What proportion of 1 fourth does 1 eighth make up? And we can visually see that 1 eighth represents 1 half of 1 fourth. So without doing any calculations, we have done the division of 1 eighth divided by 1 fourth.